Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And also that uh, probably good morning to the others who are joining from the other part of the world. Um, so today again, that we are joining uh, together to get on to our certificate course on scientific writing. And today we are having the 30th session. Uh, our resource person is uh, Professor Dilan Tiamukunga from the Huddersfield uh, University. And uh, so uh, she, several times she joined with us uh, also, and, uh, and uh, this, as what she mentioned, that this is the, the pet field, uh, the title today she has given us, the introduction to publishing by publish, selecting a journal, public, uh, publication or article type, and writing philosophy. So we think that uh, as we heard from many of you, that this is a very inspiring session of what we are gathering here to have this certificate course on scientific writing. And a few more um, messages I want to give you before starting our session today. Uh, anybody who wants to get the, uh, let's say, certificate or the recordings, of course, that we are asking you to pay a thousand rupees and register properly. Um, and also that uh, if you, uh, because we uh, we have to go a few more sessions uh, from here onwards. Probably we are planning to finish this course on uh, end of this year. And um, uh, we'd like to get your comments. Uh, we heard uh, it's good and always the good things we heard, but we'd like to uh, get the other comments also to modify our, uh, whatever the programs in future. Um, however, it's really a nice and we are really glad the organizing committee to know that you are really getting something out of our sessions. So once again, our resource person, Professor Dilanti, is joining with us from UK. And um, thanking, uh, thank you very much, madam, for being with us today uh, once again uh, with your basic schedules. And I'd like to invite uh, our, uh, my co-organizer, um, engineer Manti Karnaratne, to give a brief introduction about uh, Professor Dilanti Amaritunga, the resource person today. And uh, Ms. Manti, uh, the forum is over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Good afternoon, all of you, and good morning, Professor Dilanti. It is with great honor I introduce you, Professor Dilanti Amaratunga. Professor Amaratunga is a leading international expert in disaster reduc risk reduction and management with an extensive academic career. Currently, she is leading University of Huddersfield, UK's Global Disaster Resilience Center. She is recognized for her career long impact up until 2020 and is placed among the global top 2% of influential scientists, according to the report of Composite Citation Matrix by Elsewhere BV Netherlands and Stanford University USA, re released in August 2021. She has project managed to a successful completion of a large number of international projects, over 20 million pounds, generating significant research outputs and outcomes. She provides expert advice on disaster resilience to national and local governments, international agencies, including the UNDR. To date, she has produced over 500 publications, referred to papers and reports, and has made over 100 keynote speeches in around 40 countries. Among many leadership roles, she is the joint chief editor of the International Journal of Disaster Resilience in the built environment. She is a member of the European Commission and UNDRR's European Science and Technology Advisory Group, representing the UK, and is a steering committee member of the UK's Frontiers of Development Program, a steering committee member of the UK Alliance Pro disaster research, motivation of which is to bring together the UK's rich and diverse disaster research community to facilitate collaboration and partnership. Finally, she is a fellow of the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, a fellow of the Geographical Society, and a fellow and a chartered manager of the Chartered Management Institute UK. Dear Madam, over to you. At the same time, I want to introduce her as a great product of the Minister of Maratua, uh, dear Professor Lenti. So the forum is over to you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Bandhuri. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to do this session. You know, generally, you know, I I I prefer to keep my weekends uh, off. But uh, again, I thought, you know, sort of uh, when uh, Bandhuri wanted me to do this, is actually the second session I'm doing for this program uh, on on voluntary basis. So I thought, okay, uh, why not allocate my Saturday morning uh, uh, time? So I um how I'm going to do this is uh um. Of course, I want to sort of have a, a kind of an informal talk, but having said that, I think uh, maybe if you can actually stick with your questions uh, that I'm very happy to take at the end of the talk, because otherwise uh, uh, there will be disruption to the flow and we need to be mindful about the time um, also. So I hope uh, it is okay. So it doesn't mean that uh, I do not want to take your questions. I'm, I'm very happy to do so but uh, hang on to them uh, uh, that we can discuss them uh, at, at the end. Okay, so as, uh, you know, first of all, I just want to give you some confidence that I'm actually, I can in fact actually talk about this topic because, you know, there are some people who just talk about topics that they haven't got a clue about. So, you know, here it's, it's me, you know, Google Scholar, I have uh, 10,845 citations, particularly in my field, this is one of the highest I was told. Uh, and also you can sort of see uh, the ResearchGate reads is all, all, almost half a million. Um, and also um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I'm uh, one, uh, the, the top 2% uh, two, uh, two uh, uh, global uh, scientist uh, group, uh, I'm, I'm there also. And one other point that I want to emphasize is uh, uh, this is actually my my previous university, which I um, uh, left in 2014. And, and uh, since then, uh, uh, of course, I haven't published anything under that university, but still you can see I'm still the top publisher in, in their official repository. I, I have no idea how it happens, but perhaps uh, uh, people are using my, my papers that I have written. Uh, eight years ago, so you can actually actually see that uh, there. And then, uh, of course, there have been numerous number of awards uh, for best papers uh, by various uh, leading um, institutions uh, across the uh, across the uh, uh, world, as as you can sort of see from the CIB, CIOB, and 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 so on and so forth. And as the uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the Institute of Engineers actually mentioned this morning, my, one of my um, um, uh, other roles is I'm the joint editor of this Scopus indexed uh, journal that you can see. And we are in its uh, 12th volume now, and it is uh, on uh, ISI Web of, Web of Science and, and, and Scopus. And it is published by um, MLR Publishing, one of the leading publishing houses in the, uh, in the UK. In terms of my editorial uh, record, I have actually done editor, uh, edit, editor roles, you know, across vast array of publications. So this is actually some examples in terms of the conference proceedings. So uh, there have been sort of massive conferences that I have been editor of uh, with 675 uh, participants. And also there have been small events with uh, up to about 40 participants. So I have given a kind of a snapshot. So I, I think I edited my first conference proceedings way back in uh, 2000, so 22 years ago. Um, and in terms of books, uh, these are some of the examples that I have actually um, uh, co-authored and, and edited. Uh, so you can sort of see uh, some and uh, three of them are sort of openly available uh, to, to download uh, uh, if you if you want to, and in terms of other other uh, pub, other types of publications such as briefing papers, reports, guidebooks, uh, guidebooks, and so on and so forth. So there are numerous. Again, I have just given you a kind of a snapshot to uh, to show some uh, some examples, and also particularly with the UNDRR, uh, the United Nations uh, 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 Arm for Disaster Risk Reduction, I have done several publications with them. And the most important role is in 2015, their global assessment report. I actually led the uh, uh, um, uh, editorial uh, panel for that major uh, global uh, publication. So that is actually basically just to give you some confidence that I, I you know, um, that I have experience in this area and that I, of course, you know, I, I, I would like to tell you that I know what I'm talking about. So in terms of actually setting the scene for the session, 
I think we all actually get excited uh, at the prospect of seeing our name um, on, on a beautiful cover, glossy book, or, or perhaps listing our name in an Amazon web page, or even in our, uh, 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 you know, to get one of uh, one of our books on our own shelves in a in a bookstore. And also, sort of maybe that that is actually maybe one of your ambitions, and maybe that maybe some of you just not so quite ambitious, but at the, at the start of your careers, but still, you know, still thinking about it. And also sort of in that sense, you know, I very strongly think that you need to uh, start uh, thinking about this process in terms of submitting an article. So I suppose in that sense, um, I'm hoping that this audience, I think we have uh, quite a large number. I hope that there are people who belong to all these categories, you know, who are doing, who are thinking of doing the very first publication or who are experienced uh, uh, writers but want to get additional tips or, you know, people who are sort of um, uh, sitting somewhere in between. So I'm, I'm hoping to cover uh, 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 cover uh, the uh, perhaps needs of all, all, all of you, if at all possible. So just to start with uh, some of the common mistakes uh, that I have personally seen in, in manuscripts that have been submitted, yeah. So, you know, just to sort of in, in, in setting the scene, you know, for example, in, in some, the research question is not specified, yeah, and also paper uh, uh, exceeds the maximum number of words allowed because this is actually one of the one of the mistakes that a lot of authors do. They simply don't care about the word limits. You know, they they see the word limit in the in the guidelines, but they simply ignore that. If the word limit says eight thousand, they write fifteen thousand. So the rules are there to follow. So in that sense, I think that is one of the mistakes I have seen, um, and also sort of. Some people actually sort of uh, 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 get the sections wrong. For example, introduction can be a very extensive review of literature. And also including tables for the sake of including them without actually adding any, any value to the, uh, to the manuscript. So that is actually another, another mistake I have seen. Um, and also the manuscript sometimes does not follow the right instructions for authors. So I'm actually covering this a little bit later also, but what, what is important is that again, the rules are there to follow. So you really need to put your manuscript together based on the guidelines uh, that is given for that particular uh, publication. Yeah. And the other important thing is that the references are perhaps out of date uh, and also maybe cannot be accessed by most readers. This is very important. We, we live in a digital age and then lots of uh, information is actually accessible online. And that is why I suppose this Google Scholar Research Gate, all these uh, 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 platforms are very, very useful. So in that sense, try and actually make use of most up-to-date literature in your work uh, um, so that it, it it will actually help everybody else. But I will get into that discussion later. But here, the purpose of this uh, uh, slide is to, uh, to to get you to think about some of the mistakes that, that I have actually seen. And I'm sure that you you agree with, with at least with most of uh, most of them. And also one other point is that the paper is written in, in, in poor English. Of course, me, you know, maybe majority of you, the, 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 the first language is not English, including mine. But having said that, if you're writing in English, you know, there's a, uh, uh, the expectation is that the language has to be has to be very good. So, you know, it, it, it is not an excuse that English is not your or, or first language to write a poor paper. So these are actually some of the some of the mistakes that that I have seen. Um, and also there are sort of uh, some other mistakes, I suppose. Uh, failure to build on existing knowledge. This is a very, very important point, uh, a, a weak literature review. But I will get that to, uh, to, to you in, in bit of details later, because particularly in the Sri Lankan context, that the, the building of, of existing literature is rather poor. But again, I'm not trying to generalize. This is based on my, my experience. So a lot of Sri Lankan authors, they start with a research problem and then talk about aims, objectives, data collection, and the results without actually referring back to uh, the, the wider view of what is happening in that particular field. So that is actually missing. So so you, you need to concentrate on that, but I will get that get get into it in a little bit later. 
data. And also there's no, no critical analysis. Again, I'm covering that point, how you can do that later. And also failure to consider the audience. You really need to be mindful about who will be reading your paper. So, and you need to address, uh, address that in your paper in terms of the writing style and so on and so forth. And also the self citations. This is actually, you need to be a bit mindful about this. I'm not saying that you can't cite one of the papers that you have written, of course you can, but within limits. So if you're going to self cite beyond limits, that is unacceptable. So I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. And also use of small data samples. For example, you know, you're, write, you're trying to write a paper with, with maybe around six interviews that you have done. That is actually in most of the circumstances is not access, acceptable. And also some of you maybe, you know, you fail to understand the importance of the peer review process uh, and the use of all references, we, we, we uh, pick that up. Um, and also uh, 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 another most important point is the plagiarism. So that is actually making reference to, uh, to work that other people have done without actually proper citing them. But I will, I will get into that, uh, that later. So this is actually just a kind of a snapshot of, of uh, some of the mistakes that I have personally come across uh, uh, in my various um, ed editor uh, roles. So with that in mind, this is actually the outcome, uh, the outline of, of the talk that I'm going to do, you know, publication types, you know, the type of publications you can do, and also sort of why you should actually write papers and what are the benefits. And then I will get into the philosophy of writing a good research paper and how you can uh, structure it and then useful tips. And of course, last but not least, uh, a question and answer session uh, that, that I'm ha happy to uh, deal with. So this is actually the uh, structure of, of, of my talk uh, uh, this afternoon from your time and morning my time. So the types of writing we generally do, I think we can actually end up with a very long list. So I have actually listed different types of publications. When you think about publications, we, we always think about a pay, research paper, but not, 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 not only that. I think, you know, as you can sort of see, there can be all sorts of uh, types of publications that we will have to deal with at some point in our life. It doesn't mean that we are dealing with all these uh, types of writing, but it, it, you know, maybe some people do, some people don't, but, but just need to be mindful that there are different types of writing uh, uh, aimed at different types of audiences. So newspapers, standards, statistics, theses, legislation, government publications, research, research articles, software tool articles, archives, so on and so forth. So videos, image and sound resources. So these are different types of writing that we generally do. So purpose of scientific writing and why, and why to practice it. So for example, I think it is fair to say that non-evidence-based products doesn't go anywhere within the scientific uh, community. So this is actually very, very uh, important. So in that sense, writing is, is a very important part of science. It is used to sort of document and communicate ideas and also sort of adding, uh, uh, adding to the, uh, the, the, uh, the repository of existing um, knowledge. So again, you know, the science without evidence and unsupported by any publications just don't go that far, I think you need to be very, uh, very mindful. And also this particular quote that I, I always use, whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. I think this is actually really important in, 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 in uh, scientific writing. So why should you write journal uh, papers? Of course, you know, we just don't do things for the sake of doing in most of the situations, I suppose, you know, even though we can't generalize that. Personal passion. So I suppose, you know, some people really like actually, uh, you might have come across various blogs and so on and so forth. Some people really enjoy uh, sharing their views with the wider wo world. So that is actually in you know, a personal passion. Um, and also sort of uh, one of the other advantages of, pu of publishing a paper is that it actually sort of brings you an additional line to your CV. And in fact, that is indeed a very important line. You know, these days, particularly in academia, in the research, it is impossible uh, to, to think about career progression without having proper publication. So I emphasize the term proper, but I will get back to that later. So it is indeed a very good line of your, of your CV. So 
pros prospective employees nowadays not even in in only not only in academia and in 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 research even in other 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 types of employment they expect you to have some some papers very strange enough even in business and 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 enterprise sort of world also to to some extent and also another reason for publishing in academia is actually to build your uh, reputation. Of course, you know, the, when, when you're a, a leading publisher, uh, that definitely brings in, in reputation. I, I suppose even in my case that Bandhuni decided to invite me to do this talk, maybe that she thought that I, I have a bit of credibility to talk about the topic. So that is actually what you mean by uh, academic uh, uh, reputation. And of course, some people actually do write uh, to, to meet their long-term ambitions. You know, if you want to be a, 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 a writer by profession, so then you, you, you need to start writing some, uh, at some point. And also sort of it actually uh, brings uh, credibility uh, to you as a scientist. And last but not least, because your employer tells you to do so, otherwise, you know, they will actually maybe threaten you. Oh, well, we are not going to give you any promotions if you don't do any papers. So in that sense, well, you have to still do papers. So that that is actually, of course, it could be one of the reasons that you should actually do uh, do, do papers. Okay, common benefits of publishing. So I suppose, you know, it, it definitely improve, improves your writing skills. You know, I suppose in, in my case, when I sort of look back my 25 years of academic career, you know, when I see the, um, uh, the, the things that I have written a long time ago, of course, I can actually see a, uh, see a vast improvement. And also it helps you to sort of upgrade your knowledge. And also it, it, it helps you to sort of be updated with, with the, uh, with the uh, existing state of the art. And of course, it makes you happy. You know, I think if I'm lying, if I sort of say it doesn't make, make any difference if I see a, a article of mine is published. No, it is not the case. You know, of course, it, it, it gives you that um, you know, feel um, you know uh, uh, the 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 feeling of uh, of of uh, feel uh, feel good, and makes you happy, um, and also sort of uh, you know in terms of appreciating your own work and also adding value and 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 so on and so forth. So and also it will help you to sort of motivate others to do do papers. So that is one of the one of the uh, major points why I actually sort of said yes to Banduni to do this talk on a on a Saturday morning my time. You know, on a Saturday morning, generally, I, I like to sort of sleep until a bit late, but, you know, I had to wake up a bit early today. But, you know, so it actually, if if my talk helps at least few of you to do uh, uh, good papers, I think that is an achievement and I feel happy about it. So these are actually some of the benefits of, of publishing uh, papers. Being published, what does it mean, mean uh, having an article? That means your paper is permanent. When you publish something, you can't erase that from history. It is there. And also your paper is improved because that is actually through the interventions of editors, reviewers, and, and so on and so forth. So your paper is always improved. And also, don't forget your paper is actively promoted because you're doing it through a reputed publishers and it is actually pro uh, actively promoted. Just to give you the uh, give you, uh, an idea about the journal that I'm editing by Emerald Publishing in the UK, it has subscribers over 2 million across the world. So you can see the extent of, of the promotion uh, uh, you get by, by writing to uh, these, these journals. So that means it becomes available to a far greater audience. And also your writing is trustworthy because it goes through the peer review process. Um, I need to be very careful here because if you are just doing your publication by yourself without the peer review, then it you know, then there can be doubts, but here I'm referring to the uh, the, the peer reviewed uh, papers uh, uh, in terms of being uh, uh, being trustworthy. So these are actually uh, some of the points that you need to be uh, mindful. Okay, so what are the sort of general philosophies in in writing? Okay, so a paper is an attempt to persuade, in my view, and us linking with that, the key to persuasion is organization. And of course, you need to be mindful not to use a thousand words where 500 will do. So these are actually some of the very basic things that you need to remember when you start writing your, your, your papers. 
then another question I'm sure a lot of you are asking at the moment is what journal should you submit to? I'm sure you are reflecting on this uh, 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 when you actually start thinking, writing about, about an article. So you need to be mindful that choosing a journal to publish uh, is, is an investment decision. A good choice can enhance the impact of your work and your reputation. And similarly, you need to be mindful if you do your publication at the wrong uh, wrong uh, platform, that is also not great. So I will, I will get into that a little bit later. What are the quality indicators of journals? Rankings such as Scopus and ISI, and also number of citations, but you need to be a bit mindful here. It is actually not a complete guide to quality, but it gives some indication. And also some journals uh, make a noise about the rejection rate in terms of giving an indication how good that journal is. It can be misleading, but to a certain extent, it, 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 it could well be accurate as well. And, and some of the other factors that you need to uh, be mindful, relevant readership, high dissemination. Again, as I said, I gave you an example from the journal that I'm editing, which has well over 2 million subscribers across the world. Um, and also times from uh, submission to publication. How long does it take uh, uh, for the journal to, uh, to, to, uh, to give, uh, give you a decision? Um, and also whether what are the what what are the uh, uh, chances of the paper being uh, being uh, accepted? So you really need to be mindful. And also as a writer, uh, in, at some point of your life, you need to be political. That means national versus international, and also to be strategic. You need to be mindful whether you need to do. Uh, it is good to do five articles in a low ranked journal or just one very good article in a high rank journal. So please always think about the quality rather than the quantity. This is one other very important point that I want to emphasize. I'm not saying doing conference papers is, is bad. It is good, but particularly at the initial stages of your careers, because the conference papers are, of course, we all know the limitations because they don't have the, the wider publicity, X, Y, and E said, but if you do one good journal paper, it will take you a, a very long way. Just, just believe, believe me. So, and and in selecting that particular journal, these are some of the criteria that that uh, uh, that you can uh, um, employ. And also, always think about the co-authorship as a possibility. This is something that I always promote. I really do not want to be only only author of of any of the papers. I'm very happy to sort of share my papers and and authorships with uh, with others. But one thing that I will never do is just adding someone's name for the sake of it. If that person hasn't provided any input, then there's absolutely no way that I will be willing to do that. That is against the the publication ethics. You know, you need to be a bit mindful about that. So the co-authorship can can be with colleagues across departments and also from di different institutions, particularly in my case, uh, across countries. I'll, I'll show you some examples. Um, and also it actually, the co-authorship can demonstrate the authority and rigor of research. Um, and also it is useful in bringing in different disciplines together. For example, I have written papers with historians, um, uh, uh, sociologists, uh, and so on and so forth, who are sort of very different to the uh, more or less the engineering field uh, that I'm coming from. So that is actually very, a uh, very useful experience uh, to, to, to have. Um, and also by doing so, we can actually uh, 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 the, uh, exploit our individual uh, strengths. So always think about the philosophy philosophy of, of co-authorship. So this is just two examples that I want to show you. So, uh, you know, one, uh, one, one very recent publication, this is actually between ourselves and, and several other organizations in, in Sri Lanka, as you can sort of see, some uh, come from come from University of Colombo, um, uh, different uh, departments, and also from the industry, the chamber, uh, the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, and also ourselves. And you can see a policy brief to your right, which actually has, again, different, uh, different, uh, uh, um, authors uh, from uh, different entities. So this this has been a very rewarding experience in sharing different types of uh, uh, expertise in in doing publications. So getting back to the uh, uh, the the nitty gritty of writing papers, the uh, the the writing style.
Okay, so this is one, uh, one other important point that I want to emphasize. Some people think that when you write papers, they need to be as complicated as possible in terms of the language that you need to be using. It is simply not so. Use short and simple phrases. So using complicated English doesn't mean that the paper is of high standard. You really need to be mindful about that. And by because there's a, a, another point in in trying to be uh, 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 trying to use the complicated language is that your writing can be open to interpretation. So different interpretations. So you really need to be mindful. Therefore, just use short and very simple phrases, and also use keywords. You don't need to actually uh, uh, worry about uh, changing uh, uh, meanings of. Uh, of terms you know the repetition of terminology is absolutely fine as far as the terminology is, is is right for example in a lot of my papers you know let's say infrastructure development so if i'm writing a paper about infrastructure throughout the article maybe that you can find the term infrastructure in in 100 places so that is absolutely fine you know but i you know you should, there's absolutely no need for you to find alternatives for 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 uh, important terminology yeah so why i'm saying that is substituting other words can lead to confusion and there is no need to do so you know if you have to use a use a, a, a key keyword just just do it you know that that's absolutely fine there's absolutely no need to have a thesaurus next to you when you write your paper so this is again another point that i want to emphasize So structuring a research paper. So this is actually going to be a, a, a lengthy discussion, but I hope that it will be useful. So I'm not saying that you have to have all these sections in a paper, but again, uh, in, in general, these are the sections. So we I will take you through in, in quite a bit of detail uh, 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 about every every section of a paper. So the first one is actually the abstract, which is actually which should be concise with uh, keywords defined. But I will I will uh, I have different slides for different sections here. Abstract can follow uh, either introduction, background, and then a lit literature review, uh, followed by a methodology, and then the results discussion and the evaluation and finally the conclusion and the paper to be finished with references. So this is actually a, a, a general style, but again, I want to make it very clear. I'm not saying that every paper that you write should have all these uh, uh, sections, but what I'm saying is you it, it can be varied, but in general, these are some other subsections that you can reflect upon when you write your uh, write your paper. Okay, let's take one section at a time. I'm, I'm aware that in this course uh, that Institute of Engineers is doing, that there's a separate session on how to write an abstract. But here I'm, I'm talking about how to write an abstract of a journal paper, uh, uh, not to sort of uh, uh, abstract uh, uh, on its own, yeah? So to me, an abstract is a concise summary of a research paper, yeah? You need to be very mindful. Okay, so you might wonder why you need to write an abstract in the first instance. Why can't you just write, start the paper with, an, uh, with, with, with the introduction? Yeah, but the writing an abstract is very important for, for both selection and indexing purposes. What do you mean by those selection? What I always do is when I come across a paper, I read the abstract very quickly within five minutes, and that will give me the idea whether reading the full paper and investing, investing my time in reading that full paper will be worthwhile or not. So that is actually, that is why I said abstract is actually the snapshot of your paper. So that is why it is very important that you get the abstract in the right order. Another purpose is indexing. Again, we all live in a digital world. And most academic databases actually go through the abstract in, in terms of making indices. Okay, so I, I told you, you know, I have um, uh, uh, the, the Google Scholar is 10,800 something. I have no idea how, how I have arrived at that because I have absolutely no, no control over it. I can't add things to, 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 to it. It is happening behind the scenes, perhaps through the indexing. So that is why you, you really need to be mindful about 
identifying the right terminology in your abstract so that the various indices, indexing services will pick up your paper. You know? And what do you need to include in an abstract? You know, abstract is generally one third of a page or maybe even one quarter of a page. But having said that, within that very short uh, 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 word limit that you have, you need to identify the reason for the writing of this particular piece, the problem you are, you are addressing, and the methodology, just one line about what you did, and also how you analyze the data, and very brief indication about the results and the implications of your work. So these are the points that you need to cover in your abstract so that the reader will decide whether it is worthwhile reading your paper, number one. And number two is indexing services will decide it is worth indexing your paper. So you really need to sort of, this is, this is another uh, um, capability that you really need to develop, how you can summarize a paper within quarter of a page, you know, covering all these five topics. So, but having said that in a journal paper, particularly in, in this digital age, it is really important that you get your right terminology within your abstract. So then the introduction section. Okay, what do you have to, I think some of you actually get this, uh, uh, get this uh, thing, uh, get this section confused with the rest of the paper. I have seen papers where there are a lot of references being mentioned in the introduction. There's absolutely no need to do so. So what is introduction? To me, this introduction actually sets the scene and puts the research in context. Yeah. For example, the reader will know why the study was done and how it broadly relates to other research. This is really, really important. Again, as I said before, I'm not trying to generalize here, but a lot of papers that I have read coming from the Sri Lankan authors, you haven't got that actually, uh, the, the, that relationship to other research. You always sort of start with the research problem or oh, well this is a problem and I have device aims and objectives here we go I'm collecting my my data and I, I have now written the paper without actually making reference to, uh, to to the outer world but I will revisit this when I actually discuss the literature review later but you don't you you will have to do that in in, in your introduction in terms of uh, in terms of uh, letting the uh, readers know what is the state of the art? What you have done to improve the current state of the art? Yeah, that is actually very, very important. And also briefly describe what the research questions you have dealt with and also aim of your study. Yeah. So, and also in, in that sense, it is very important that actually you reflect uh, 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 what is your aim and objective of, of, of the paper through the introduction uh, section. Okay, the literature review. This is very, very, very important. You know, I can't emphasize enough the importance of this, uh, uh, this section. You know, of course, like with anything else, let, let me sort of uh, uh, throw at you a kind of a definition about the literature review. It says the selection of, a, of available documents on the topic, which contain information, ideas, data, and evidence written from a particular standpoint to fulfill certain aims or express certain views on the nature of the topic and how it is to be investigated and the effective evaluation of these documents in relation to the research being proposed. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But I have highlighted the key terms that you need to take away from this. This is actually reviewing of available documents. It could be information, ideas, data, and evidence from a particular standpoint relating to the subject of your paper. So in simple terms, that is what the literature review is all about. This is one of the areas that, again, I'm not trying to generalize. I have actually noticed I have done so many workshops uh, to, to particular audiences in Sri Lanka, various organizations, and so on and so forth. Uh, all on voluntary basis, and I have actually seen that there's a gap in in bringing in literature uh, uh, to 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 uh, their work. So so I I can't emphasize enough the importance of of this literature review in in your research paper. So some what are the questions? Okay, why do you have to do the literature review? Of course, you know we don't invest our time in 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 doing things which doesn't add any value. 
So these are actually some of the benefits of, of doing the literature review. Doing a literature review will, will give you the idea what are the key, key sources in your, in your um, area of research, and also what are the major issues and debates about the topic. That is why you really need to be up to date with information. Again, we, are, we live in, in digital age, things are changing on daily basis. This is another, another uh, uh, point that I want to emphasize in terms of using up-to-date information. I have seen in a lot of research papers making reference to articles written in 2005. We, we live in 2022, so you really need to be mindful about, about uh, uh, making reference to most up-to-date information. And also, what are the political standpoints, depending on the topic? You need to be very mindful about, about the, what is the political standpoint in terms of a, of a particular point, a particular topic is concerned. And also, what are the origins and definitions of a topic? You know, because maybe, maybe there are some topics which goes, goes uh, beyond centuries. Like, you know, if you take the, the, the evolution of human, human life, you know, we can actually go back to Charles Darwin. So if you're writing an article about evolution of humans, you have to use the Charles Darwin reference no matter how old it is. So in that sense, you know, the origins and definitions. And then what are the key theories and concepts and ideas uh, uh, around your particular to uh, research topic? Only the lit lit literature review will give you that. And also what are the main questions and problems that have been addressed to date? And then, as I said before, this will actually give you the idea about what are the gaps that you need to be feeling with by by doing further research. So that is actually very, very important in terms of main questions and problems. That means getting a snapshot about what the current state of the art is. And then how the knowledge about that particular topic is structured and organized around, you know, it could be any topic, engineering, infrastructure, history, language, disasters, whatever. So how the knowledge is actually, actually structured. Yeah. And then how we can actually use these approaches to increase our understanding and knowledge. So th these are some of the benefits of, of carrying out at, at uh, uh, carrying out a detailed literature review. Of course, it, literature review actually sort of uh, uh, serves many purposes. Yeah, it actually helps you to uh, helps you to distinguish between what has been done from what needs to be done. This is extremely important. If you remember this in doing a literature search, that itself is enough, in my opinion. The difference between what has been done and from what needs to be done. And also, it will help you to discover important variables rela related to the topic that maybe that you haven't come across before. Yeah. And also, it will help you to uh, the synthesis. I'll, I'll get to the term synthesis later. And, and to, uh, by synthesizing literature, you will be able to gain a new perspective. That is very, very important. Um, and also literature review will, will uh, help you to identify various relationships between various theories that you ha haven't perhaps come across before. And also it will help you to establish the context of a topic or a problem. You know, what is happening elsewhere? If you sort of take the, uh, the economic crisis in Sri Lanka, but of course, you know, Sri Lanka is not alone. Things are taking place everywhere. Even in the UK, we have a major, major economic crisis. So if you actually do a literature review about what is happening in the UK at the minute, you will be able to get an understanding about what lessons can be learned in terms of actually sharing experiences via a literature review. And also it will help you to rationalize the significance of the problem. We, we won't be writing an article if the topic is not important. So in that sense, the literature review will give you that, that uh, confidence why you should be writing a paper based on a literature review, because it will uncover how significant that piece of information is. And also, of course, doing literature review will improve your subject vocabulary. This is very, very important for people like you and I who's whose mother language is actually not English. So you need to do literature reviews in order to improve your subject vocabulary. There's absolutely no second word about that. And also it will help you to sort of structure the subject properly and also relate to ideas and theories and to learn about various methodologies. So these are some of the vast list of benefits uh, uh, that you will gain by doing a literature, a, a literature review. This is again, once again, a snapshot. I actually sort of uh, 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 
mentioned the term synthesis. Yeah, what, what do you mean by synthesis, literature synthesis? This is actually making connections between the parts identifying in the analysis. Yeah, so I think, but having said that, this is actually not, a, not just a matter of reassembling the parts back to the original order, but looking for a new uh, uh, new uh, orders and also showing patterns. This is extremely important. Again, one of the weaknesses, one of the mistakes I have seen in 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 lot of papers. I think I'm um, um, I'm okay to use the term lot of here. In, you 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 go through literature, identify what people have written, and you just list them in your in your research paper. Just saying, okay, um, um, author Pereira did this, author De Silva did that, author Munasinga said this. So at the end of the day, so what, so the question is, so what? But rather than just citing what other people have said, you really need to synthesize the literature you have uh, read and, and you need to look out for new orders and, and showing patterns. That is actually what, what, what I meant by synthesis. You really need to be looking for uh, patterns, uh, relationships, contradictions uh, in, in the work that you have read that have been written by other people. Don't ever do the mistake of just listing what other people have said in your article without bringing in the synthesis uh, to, to, to the equation. So literature synthesis, it actually requires a comprehensive knowledge of the subject and a capacity to think in broad terms. So you really need to be thinking outside the box. That is why, again, doing the literature search is extremely important. So you, you, it will give you, it will give you opportunities to sort of see what else is happening outside your own little bubble. Uh, that is extremely uh, important. And also it actually sort of, uh, the synthesis will help you to uh, keep control of, of very large amount of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of data. And also in, in doing uh, uh, synthesis, you shouldn't be afraid of considering very extreme suggestions or generalizations. You know, be brave and uh, based on, on uh, points you have read before, you, you should be able to come up with maybe some even some controversial statements. That is absolutely fine. That is what research is all about. And also one of the outcomes could well be uh, the, the potential uh, ways to looking uh, looking uh, at some aspects of the world in a, in a, in a different uh, a different way. So in that sense, as you can see, the synthesis needs to be coherent and explicit, and it needs to uh, provide very clear links links between X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z can lead to A or B. That is absolutely fine as far as you identify the clear clear links. So let literature synthesis is extremely important and, and some people don't take this seriously, but you really need to, because if you don't have the good literature synthesis in your paper, the chances of that being published or considered as a good paper is extremely low. So it is really worth investing your time uh, uh, in, in doing literature reviews and, and synthesis. So uh, these are some of the, some of the uh, uh, um, uh, tips that I want to share uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 that you can consider in writing a literature review. Maybe you know include only those work that is relevant to your research. You know it is obvious. You know I'm trying to say the obvious here. If I'm uh, if, if my work is relevant to infrastructure, I'm not going to write uh, 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 about. Uh, let's say his, history of something, you know, so always just try to actually uh, uh, include the work relating to your research. So it is just like, uh, you know, in, in, in Sri Lanka, you sort of say like, you know, you know I, I do not want to say that in Sinhalese, but it is when when you only know uh, uh, how to write about the tale, but the, but the talk is about the dog. So you actually get into the tale and then you start writing about the tale rather than the dog. So, so we should be actually get into that. Uh, uh, that setting, um, and also sort of make sure that you read and understood the, the cited work, so which is very, very important. And again, cited work, that is extremely important. You should never quote someone else's work without making the proper citation, but I will get into that later. And also sort of 
organize your content according to ideas rather than individual publications. This is very, very important. You can uh, identify the themes and bring in other literature around the themes rather than around different what different people have published. So the thematic analysis is extremely useful rather than going by the articles. Yeah. So again, I want to highlight the fact that do not ever simply quote or paraphrase the contents of published articles. You really need to actually synthesize uh, the, the uh, the, the, the literature that you are reading. So in that sense, literature synthesis is the term that you need to remember. And also sort of in, in structuring the literature review, uh, uh, it is very important that the concepts are presented in an order that makes sense in the context of your research. Again, I'm, I'm sure you have heard about the funnel approach. So you that means you start with the bigger picture and then you you, you come down and they narrow it down, but with all the links together. So you shouldn't actually jump from one, one level to the other. So in that sense, it's very important that you uh, that you maintain uh, this, uh, this order, which actually makes sense in, in writing your in writing your literature review. And you in that sense, you need to do some uh, work on planning, uh, 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 planning in, in getting this particular structure together to your literature review. It is okay to invest a bit of time in doing so, so that it will actually uh, give you rewards later uh, and, and it will produce a definitely a coherent piece of work, in my opinion. And also uh, uh, making an outline or a plan is a good way uh, to, to start experimenting with these different structures. And also so if you are a student, you can, of course, talk to your supervisor before you make a final decision. Uh, but if you are kind of an individual writer, you can actually reflect with different, uh, uh, different uh, models. Or I think of course, talk talked with one of your colleagues. I always do that. You know, it, it can only uh, uh, expand your sort of ideas if you're sort of sharing your different views with other people. So try and actually discuss with others about different plans you have in your mind in, in terms of structuring a paper, uh, a, 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 a literature review. And then I think it will only help you to uh, do, do the best uh, as far as you can, uh, can um, do. So the the then the tips uh, tips of the structure you know some some tips that I want to share with you. Okay, a common error in literature review is that you 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 present material from one author followed by another followed by another. I think we we highlight I highlighted this point already, but that is actually not the way to do it. So you really need to actually bring in ideas together and to do the thematic synthesis in my in, in, in my view. Group authors where, uh, who actually bring in similar conclusions so that you can actually, you can actually uh, create links by using words such as also, additionally, again, similarly. So these are the type of terms that you can use in bringing uh, similar uh, research uh, findings together through the literature review, yeah? And also, uh, I'm sure you come across situations where authors disagree. So in that sense, but you can still link the words that, that indicate uh, contrast uh, 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 between what has been said by different people. You can actually do that by using terms such as however, conversely, on the other hand, nonetheless, you know, these are the terms that you can bring in in, in combining uh, different views uh, written by different people in, in your literature review. So in other, uh, in, uh, in, you know, maybe at other times, you, you, you may want to qualify an author's work, uh, 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 particularly by using terms such as specifically, usually, generally. Uh, uh, in, in that say you, you want to maybe highlight a piece of work that someone has done, which is very relevant to your work. So that is actually okay to do that, yeah. And also sort of one other issue that you should avoid in, in structuring your thesis, uh, literature review is that literature reviews are often written as, as standalone without links to the rest of the te text. You, you should try and avoid that at any cost because that flow, as I sort of said, the flannel approach is really important. You shouldn't be jumping from A to X, X to P, P to Z. It should be A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure that you get my point. So in that sense, maintaining that link 
moving from one one step to the other uh, we, we can sort of say the stepwise writing is is really really uh, important so remember that when you do your uh, uh, do your liter literature review of course you in order to do a proper literature review you need to develop certain skills what are they you, know, you should be willing to seek information yeah identify potential useful books journals and so on and so forth that itself is another another session if if we are to go to uh, go, go to that in detail in in how to pick up the right uh, right sources but you need to develop that skill and also you should develop the skill to scan the literature and and keep records and notes again there are various ways and means of doing it for example using uh, this uh, uh, the the software package called endnotes is very very useful in in keeping keeping all your references in in order and also scanning the literature itself is a, is a um, skill that you should uh, develop that is where the abstract is very important you can scan the abstract and you should be able to uh, pick up a in a minute or two, whether that particular article will be useful to you or not. So you really need to develop the information seeking skills. Yeah. And then the next set of skills is, I, I want to label it as analytical skills. So you really need to uh, 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 identify relationships, uh, relationships between concepts. We, we discussed about it before. The use of funnel approach, you know, like the having the uh, having the uh, 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 the links between A, B, C, D, and E rather than A, X, Y, P, Z like that. No, just in, uh, using the uh, tunnel approach, and also conceptually organize organize synthesis. You just identify what other people have said, and you have brought in your views. It can be controversial, it can be political. That is fine, but. It is just not a listing of what other people have said. You have brought in the synthesis. So that is definitely a skill to develop, how to actually generate that analytical uh, uh, aspect. So you, you need to develop that skill in order to carry out a good literature synthesis. And also you need to reflect. You need to reflect on, on, on the outcome of the analysis. So once you analyze a set of data, you you, you end up with a, with, a, with a set of outcomes or outputs. So you need to reflect on, on the link between uh, the the inputs and the outputs by by using this uh, the, this uh, the, the reflecting on 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 the differences and then you need to actually develop reporting skills so for for example you should develop skills to present your outcomes in a proper order again very very important you shouldn't be jumping from one top one topic to the other you have to maintain that flow in the journal otherwise the the reader will will very quickly lose the interest so if the flow is correct that that will be a rewarding experience for the reader to read your paper and also other very important point is is to learn the skill of writing citing references again that can be another session uh, in in my view uh, how to write uh, cite references but I'll, I'll show you a snapshot how how uh, the importance of of referencing uh, a little bit later so these are actually some of the skills that you should develop in 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 doing the literature review and the literature synthesis once again i can't emphasize enough the importance of having the right literature review in your paper for it to uh, 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 make it a worthwhile read extremely important don't start with the problem and and go down start with the problem and reflect back to the wider world to see where your problem fits in by bringing in literature that is extremely important don't be a frog in a well come out of the well and see the outside world that is in very simple terms okay so the next so we discussed about abstract introduction and the literature search so the next term uh, next uh, uh, section of the uh, of the uh, paper is actually the research methods yeah you really need to describe the context and setting of the study and also you have to specify this uh, study design again this is actually one of the one of the areas you need to be very mindful in my view the backbone of a research paper is a research method if you have got the method wrong then the findings and the analysis everything will be pear-shaped so you really need to pick up the right method 
in order to do that, you need to get a really good understanding about the methods available. You shouldn't be picking up a method just because that it is your favorite method. But of course, we have our own biasness towards various uh, either qualitative or quantitative or either mix. But, but you need to actually bring in the right method to the research question. And, and in doing so, you really need to describe the population that you are, do, you are dealing with. It can be a group of patients, doctors, hospitals, communities, you know, so on and so forth. So you really need to describe the population, we call it, that you have actually dealt with in, in, in collecting your data. And also you need to be very mindful about the sampling strategy. You shouldn't be picking up your friends to do the, uh, to, to do the interviews because you thought that is the easiest way to do. That is actually not correct. So you really need to actually describe the sampling strategy. But once you identify a good sampling strategy, if your friends belong to that sample then there's absolutely no problem in contacting them but having said that in the in the paper you really need to describe the sampling strategy um, and also you you need to describe the intervention the meaning is maybe sometimes you might be doing the research by yourself or maybe you might be getting a, a, a group of research assistants to do that so there can be different interventions so if it is applicable you need to describe that in your methodology section and also you need to identify main study variables you know what are the areas that you have uh, you have uh, concentrated on in in collecting uh, data through these methods and also you really need to describe the data collection instruments and the procedures for example if it is interviews you might be using semi-structured, you might be using open-ended, you must be using closed, but you need to say why you decided to do those. Again, reasoning every little step that you have done, particularly in a research method uh, uh, section is really important. You need to, depending on the situation of your research, maybe the best approach is semi-structured interviews. So say so, that you decided to do semi-structured interviews due to these, these, these reasons. Maybe for a certain piece of research involving communities, maybe it is actually <coughs> um, uh, grounded theory, just say so. Maybe for a certain type of other research lab base, maybe it is survey, <coughs> experimental, just say so. And then the method, method section needs to be then concluded by outlining how you have analyzed uh, uh, your data. Of course, there are different methods of analyzing data. Again, uh, it is not my intention to go through those, but here you need to actually mention in your paper how you have analyzed the data. You have you have you used um, digital mechanisms, or does it just a kind of a, 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 a direct pattern matching, or is content analysis um, you uh, using SPSS, any other statistical pack packages, in vivo? So there are a lot of ways of doing data analysis, but you need to say in your paper how you have done your data analysis as part of your methodology section. As I said before, the right methodology is indeed the backbone of any research and is related out, out output. So just because that you like particular research method, it doesn't mean it will fit it will fit in with the research you are doing. So you really need to be very mindful about, about that. And in the paper, don't forget that you really need to be uh, need to fully justify the method you are using and the reasons for its use. This is very, very important because research methodology section is uh, is 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 one of the core. Uh, uh, one of the main deciding factors uh, uh, whether or not that your research paper will will get accepted uh, to be published. So be very mindful about, about the research methodology section. Generally, I must say that the Sri Lankan audiences, again, my experience is this, this area is, 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 is quite good. And also what I have seen that there's biasness towards the quantitative studies. I think you, you guys really like actually doing surveys. But try to think outside the box, you know, think about the, the various uh, qualitative mechanisms um, as well in terms of research methods. Then the next section is actually the results. Uh, research results. You, know, you have actually done the literature review, you have discussed the uh, um, uh, method, research method, and then you, you are then reporting about the data collection and then you are then you are actually uh, describing who the participants are and then you are presenting the key findings so uh, 
with respect to the, uh, the central research question. And also, in addition to that, if you want, you can also present secondary findings. This is, again, very, very important. I have seen in some papers, some people start the paper with oranges, but it, it end, ends up with apples. So there's no link between what you what you set up at the very initial stages as aims and objectives and what you present at the, at the very end. Don't don't uh, fall into that trap. Always try to maintain that link between what you want to do, what you set the scene at the very beginning, and and what you're reporting as part of your results through the data that you have collected through the methodology that you're proposing. So there need to be links between uh, these these different um, sections. So the discussion section you know, that is where you actually present your data and, and get into the little bit more information about, about what, uh, uh, you know, the, the meaning of your data. You know, don't be afraid to state the main findings of your study. Be, be bold and just say it straight away. And also discuss the main results with reference to previous research. We call it generalization, don't we? This is extremely important. You know, if you have found out something new, uh, through your research, always refer it back to the, uh, the, 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 how should I say, to the outside world and to the rest of the literature to sort of see how, how you have improved the state of the art by carrying out your, your, your research. So that is actually really, the generalization is really, really important. And also nowadays we are, we are very much talking about uh, policy implications of our research. So if, if, if possible, try and discuss the policy and practical implications of your results. Uh, we, we always do that in the UK. This is actually compulsory, you know, because our research is funded by the taxpayer. So we really need to be contributing to the society. So every every paper should have a section about policy and practice implications uh, uh, about your research. Uh, and also, don't be afraid to sort of talk about uh, strength and limitations of your study. A any study that we do, have a limitation, believe me. So, but don't be afraid to say that. You know, sort of, uh, particularly during the COVID uh, uh, period, you know, the, one of the major limitations was sort of lack of access to primary data. But having said that, we still managed to do quite a lot of publications by using other me mechanisms. So, but we always cited that as a limitation. So, just don't be afraid to do that. And also offer certain perspectives of future work. You know, you have actually arrived at certain conclusions, but just give recommendations of future of future work so someone else can pick it up and 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 take it from there so this is actually a, perhaps a kind of a rough structure that you can use in 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 the discussion section so some of the points to consider in presenting the discussion uh, and and the key findings here for example you need to be very straightforward about the content and the message is given very, uh, 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 very directly. And also the, the style, how, the way that your message is presented, the structure, the language and the illustration, and also the form, the grammar, the punctuation, the use. So you really need to be, again, these are some of the skills that you need to develop in, uh, in writing your, or your key findings, the content, the style and the form. But don't, 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 don't worry, when you start writing, these things will, will come to you automatically. You know, they, they will be part of your system uh, as you go along. And then the next section is the conclusion of a, of a paper. This is actually not the conclusion of my talk, but the conclusion of the paper that I want to highlight. Yeah. So, but I, I think, again, this is one of the sections that some people, some authors get completely mixed up. The difference between abstract introduction and the conclusion. So I have actually given you points. Just please try and reflect them. The, uh, the conclusion is actually it stresses the importance of the statement of the paper. You are revisiting what you have said at the very beginning that you're going to achieve. Yeah. And also it gives the research paper kind of a sense of completeness. Yeah. And then it actually definitely leaves a final impression on the reader. So this is actually very, very important. And also a conclusion you really need to remember is not merely a summary of your points or restatement of your research problem, but synthesizing the key points. Now, again, I have, I have seen a lot of authors do this mistake by, uh, 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 by uh, 
rewriting the aims and objectives in the conclusion. There's no need to do that because you have already written them. But, and also you don't need to emphasize the statement there, but maybe you need to actually uh, uh, identify the key points that you want to uh, get the reader to uh, 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 take as takeaway points. So that is actually uh, uh, another very important uh, uh, point because the research paper in the conclusion sector, in my view, it should provide a very clear interpretation of the results of your research uh, uh, by, by means of stressing the significance of your study. So just make sure that you don't repeat the same information in different sections of the of the paper and these different sections are that are there for a purpose so just try to uh, try to be be mindful about about those and what to avoid uh, in in in, uh, in in a uh, in in your conclusion generally can obvious opening phases you know conclusion is is not the not the place to do that and also you shouldn't bring in any any new information in the conclusion because that is too late too, too late to do so you need to do that at the very beginning of your paper and also conclusion is not the section to do a very long and elaborate discussion you should have done that during the discussion section not not in the conclusion and you shouldn't be apologizing to anybody in your conclusion again i have sort of seen some people do that just avoid it doing it and also just don't appeal to your readers' emotions. In so this, this relates to certain types of research, so you need to be very mindful about uh, about to about how you want to deal with the readers' emotions if it is applicable. This is a, 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 a quite a, a crowded slide, but I, I I initially thought maybe to have two slides, but I thought okay, let me have just one slide with effective uh, uh, writing tips on conclusion. So again, that there's, there's, there's a lot here. Maybe you can actually take a screenshot and, and read about it later. But you know, the, again, the conclusion sector is really important. What you need to do is synthesizing rather than summarizing. Yeah, And also you need to actually echo the introduction by telling a scenario that you have introduced uh, in your introduction set section and what you have uh, achieved and also you can actually redirect the reader for example your conclusion can play a, a role of being your reader's uh, bridge back to the real world by by redirecting the reader and also you can in in the conclusion you can of course sort of you can you you should be uh, you shouldn't be afraid to uh, challenge your own conclusion you know so what questions you know just just be brave to ask that type of uh, uh, questions and also conclusion in conclusion you can actually address certain uh, limitations um, and also sort of you can demonstrate ideas to create a new picture or meaning to the subject area and also you can actually a lot of people do that by by uh, posing questions that other researchers can pick up in, in taking this particular research forward. So these are some of the ways of, of how you can actually structure the conclusion. You know, I, I know a lot of writers, they, they, they run out of steam when they get to the conclusion section of, of, of any article or, or paper or a report. Don't do that. If you feel tired, leave it to another day. But I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of the conclusion sector. You know, I have seen some people have written some really good papers, really good detailed analysis, but the con conclusion is just simply worth uh, worthless the effort. So you really need to be investing time in, in doing your, your conclusion. So this is actually the more or less the last part of a, of a research paper, followed by references. What I want to say, say to you here is all references should be recited, including those tables and figures and, and everything else. No more, no less. Very, very important. Keep that in your mind. Use consistent style throughout as directed by the conference organizers if it is in a conference, because different, different journals, different platforms use different types of, of citations. So, in a paper, you need to follow the guidelines rather than your own uh, own uh, uh, preferred method. This is another another area that I get so annoyed in 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 reading uh, some of the articles submitted to to the uh, pieces that I'm editing. You know, they, they, some some authors are very good at completely ignoring the guidelines and they go and do their own thing thinking that is acceptable. No, I I will just straight away return the article saying you know 
follow the article uh, in, in writing the article follow the guidelines given so you know these things actually really matter so keep that in your mind okay helpful thing uh, hits uh, hints uh, in, in plagiarism and referencing so plagiarism, the term plagiarism i'm sure that you are familiar to that term it comes from 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 a latin word of of uh, the simple meaning of kidnapping yeah. So really speaking, plagiarism is considered fraud. So you really need to try and avoid it. Not try and avoid it. You really need to avoid it. Yeah. So in, in the peer review process, I suppose in the past, you might have thought, well, you know, person who's reading your article will not pick up that you have actually straight away copied a sentence uh, uh, that was written by someone else. That is in the past, I must say, you will be caught because there are systems nowadays, particularly major journals. We do this every day. Even last night, I, I had to sort of run, run this exercise. You will be caught. So be mindful about, about the references. That's absolutely fine to sort of refer to other people's work, but with proper acknowledgement. So that is very, very important and with the right uh, referencing style. So I'll show you an example about the second point. So here... This is what I did last night in, in, in the two different papers. You can sort of see uh, the, uh, the first one, similarity index is 50%. 46 from inter, in, uh, internet sources, 24 from publications, and 22 from student papers. And another paper, uh, uh, similarity index is 17%, and internet sources 15, publication uh, uh, mm, 10 and student papers uh, 7. So you can actually see the difference. But again, what I don't do is by even the first one, by looking at it, I will not just disregard that paper. What is important is the software will give you the, you can actually got in, get in, in, in these boxes and to see what does this percentages mean. So we really need to do that. So that is why I don't agree with some other journals saying, well, your similarity in this in index should be less than 25%. It really doesn't make any sense. You really need to be getting in and, and to check what, what does it really mean. Even in this first one, even though that the similarity in this index is 50, there could well be a reason why it was like that. Maybe that author has published several papers before. I, I, I don't know, but in this case, I haven't done it, but maybe you know, it can well be that the first paper is accepted and the second one isn't. You know, so only by looking at percentages, you can't decide on the on on the extent of of plagiarism, in my view. But you really need to be getting into um, <clears throat> into the percentages. But the again, the advantages of of uh, my research students uh, uh, here what they have is when they do a paper, they have the uh, ability to uh, to to uh, submit their drafts uh, to to the university systems to check the check these percentages. So sadly, I do not know the setup in in Sri Lanka and in other countries, but I'm hoping that the universities will will have these systems in place uh, uh, in in helping the um, authors because you know so again, it it varies from country to country. But what I want to say to you is, just be mindful about about referencing and and the plagiarism. You know, just it's okay to use other people's work as far as you do the right writing in the right way. Yeah. So that is actually my takeaway point uh, from uh, 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 about references. <clears throat> okay. So just I actually discussed about you know just hang on to your questions. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that we will have a bit of time to have a have a discussion. But I have actually now covered how to structure a paper from abstract to the conclusions to the references. So these are actually some of the overall tips that I want to um, I, I want to give you. Yeah, in, in summarizing what I have already said. Of course, you need to study the current literature. As I said to you before, don't start with a research problem that you think is worthwhile uh, uh, writing a paper about. Always take a step back and, and make reference to the wider audience. Again, in simple terms, come out of the well and see the outside world. So that is actually what you mean by study the current literature. And also, uh, 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 choose uh, <coughs> where you are publishing. <coughs> Choose very carefully. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
you can, of course, get advice from colleagues who have experience in the business and also sort of talk to um, uh, talk to them about their their own experiences, because submitting a journal and writing an article is an investment, as I said to you. If you do the wrong thing, a wrong thing that will actually damage your reputation, because once you publish something, it will be there in the public domain. So you need to be very, very mindful about where to publish. So if you have any questions on that, I'm sure you will have about you know this fee paying journals and so on and so forth. I'm happy to answer those questions later. Yeah. And then look out for good journals. Again, as I sort of said, I, I covered those points initially. You know, what does it mean by a good journal? You know, indexing, citations, rejection rates, who the editors are, who the public publisher. So you really need to sort of balance a lot of points against your decision based on, on, uh, on, on your field of studies. And also, writing a paper, have your own deadlines, because it is actually not an exam that you're facing. The, uh, the, the deadlines can be very fluid and maybe deadlines will, will never, you will never be able to get there. Just don't get into that trap, you know, have a realistic deadline, you know, maybe by 31st of December, you know, we are coming to the end of 2022. Just you know, have you you know have a deadline in your own own mind. You know, by the thirty first of December, I'm just somehow going to finish this paper. That will help you. And also, but in papers, be conservative in any claims made. Again, the type of language that you should be using need to be mindful. You you know terms such as should, must. This is the only research that you will come across in this area you know you need to be very mindful about making making claims like that you know be be conservative yeah and also be generous in your references to previous literature again things to remember is use up-to-date literature based on your on your field but having said that i'm not saying that you shouldn't be using old literature again i i discussed about the issue about human evolution you know if you're writing a paper about human evolution you have to re uh, refer to charles darwin which is actually so, so many centuries old publication so it, it varies from uh, from topic to topic but particularly in, in my field disasters it's very, very fast moving. So you really need to have up to date uh, information. And again, in, in various engineering fields, it is exactly the same. A few more trip, uh, uh, tips. Uh, when you have one substantial paper published, it is always used to pursue your theme with additional submissions. So when you have your first paper, it will actually open the door for you to sort of do other papers. So always try to follow that up. But I need to make it very clear it doesn't mean that you are you are actually uh, slicing one research into so many papers don't ever do that because it actually just uh, dilutes the the message that you want to say i have seen this uh, uh, with so many researchers they do one one research study but they are, try to write so many papers based on 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 the same uh, same research maybe by picking up one objective uh, uh, as the basis for one paper another objective as a basic basis for second paper my advice is don't do that one good paper is much better than writing writing 10, 10 papers because again we are in the digital world the indexing and the citations are really really important so you you, you have to actually uh, aim at, at at quite high yeah and also if you are sort of targeting a particular journal you can always study the style of the uh, published papers uh, before and the, and the structure and so on and so forth it will help you to structure your own um, own uh, uh, paper for example, all, all journals have their sort of uh, uh, um, homepage, which, which gives information about how to structure a paper. So adhere to them. Just don't ignore, you know, the last thing that I want, I, I, I get so annoyed if, if, you know, all the guidelines, this is actually the uh, homepage of the journal that I'm editing. And if I receive a journal uh, from somebody who has completely ignored the writing style, word numbers, uh, and the referencing style, I, I get so annoyed because after you know guidelines are there to follow. So just just uh, because if we all are humans, if if I get into that bad mood at the beginning of the paper, how good the paper is, you know, it might reflect on the review. You know, we all are humans, aren't we? So in that sense, you know, but if the paper is written in the right order, uh, uh, adhering to the right instructions, that is actually a, I I consider that as a blessing. It, so that means my first bo box is ticked already. So 
uh, then I'll go to the second phase of, of reading the paper. So uh, uh, that is really, really uh, important. So before actually sort of, uh, mm, before actually you submit your article, do, do your own, own, own peer review. Get someone else to do it. I always do that. You know, sort of a good pair of, uh, a fresh pair of eyes is always uh, useful. And, and ask them to be honest. You know, I think they shouldn't be just saying for the sake of saying that how good your paper is if it, if it is actually not. But again, in that sense, you should be you should be a good uh, receiver as well, that you should be willing to receive any criticism also rather than all positives all the time. Because we are, we are, we are always too close to our own work, so we, we will not see, see our, our gaps. And one other thing is I, I get so annoyed when I sort of see the papers that haven't been proof, proof uh, checked. So there should be no incorrect spellings, no incom incomplete references, spell checkers. Uh, uh, you need to remember that spell checkers are not foolproof. So you should do your own proof check uh, a few, quite a few times uh, just to make sure that it is actually readable. Yeah, And then ensure that the paper is checked and edited so that it has that one voice. I remember I told you about the final approach. So you have the, 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 the everything is linked to the linked together quite nicely. And also in doing so, exploit your individual strengths. For example, if I, to, to be honest with you, if I sort of take a, uh, take a paper, my strengths are, I suppose, literature search and also uh, um, uh, research methods. Uh, so those are sort of my strengths. So you know, em emphasize on those uh, strengths. And also in, in, in the paper, you need to demonstrate the authority and the rigor of your research. You can do that in your conclusion section, as I uh, pointed out to you before. Um, and also one other uh, could be quite a political thing is if it is a kind of a co-authored paper, agree and clarify order of appearance of authors uh, before it, it goes anywhere. This can be a quite a conscientious thing otherwise, you know, because particularly in my, my field of studies, it really doesn't matter whether you're the first author or the, or the last author, it really doesn't matter. But it, it is not the case in, in, in some fields. So you really need to be mindful about that and to get that sorted out before the paper is, is submitted. So you really need to be targeting the right journal. So I think it is fair to say that many papers are rejected simply because they don't fulfill the expected requirements. As I sort of say, they fail the very first hurdle. They don't even go into the review process. This is actually very true. So in that sense, identify a few possible targets, but be realistic. And Find where to send your paper, the uh, editor, regional editor, and so on and so forth, and and check uh, a copy of journal. So you uh, go to the website, you know, get a feel about what has already been been published. Yeah, and also another way of doing that is I I receive this all the time. Send an outline of the abstract to the editor, asking whether it it looks suitable uh, and interesting for that particular journal, so that you will you will get the feedback or how it could be made so. So this is actually, again, an important point for you to uh, be mindful about. Yeah. And also, uh, uh, you can actually ask how the editor would like like to see the submission. Of course, I don't, I don't, as an editor, I don't expect people to email the papers to me because now everything is actually, uh, we, we do these things via online uh, platform. So it, 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 it has to be that way, but some, some authors don't, you know, you know, just to make make it very clear, they submit the paper online, then email that to you also. You know, there's absolutely no need to do that. So just follow the follow the instruction. So getting back to this sort of the referee's comments. So here are some of the examples of some of the positives. Yeah. A very good paper. I quite enjoyed reading it. Uh, and the credit goes to the authors for making it such an enjoyable experience and so on and so forth. And some, even some authors actually make certain suggestions. And also some people could say, simply say, well done. And then very good comments. So I'm not sort of saying this is the only comment, but these are actually, this can be kind of a, uh, some of the positive impressions that you should be receiving. And uh, of course, in the, in the same way, in the negative uh, uh, comments, you know, stringing a series of sentences that are each probably quite correct does not create a paper of any value. And the overriding impression is that this is what the author has has done here. Yeah. 
and then another comment, there has been inadequate critical review of the long list of references to make this paper worth accepting. The paper needs a good proofread as some of the sentence structure and choice of words make the paper difficult to read and potentially obscures the author's indent and meaning. So, and also the, another one, an amazing scramble of references in the first four lines is beyond belief in a serious research paper. These are actually a, a real life example. So I suppose, you know, that is quite a bit rude, the fourth one to say that, but anyway, some, some reviewers, you know, they, they make use of anonymity to, uh, to, to say what, how they feel anyway. So this is uh, what it is. I thought it was quite amazing to say that, to be honest with you. If your paper is refused, don't be discouraged upon refusal from editors. I know it is hard to take it, particularly if you are an early career researcher. It is quite hard, you know, you, you will be disheartened. But we all have gone through this, uh, this process, so you can't be successful all the time. You know, I, I very strongly believe you need to actually uh, throw at least seven stones for one to go and hit the target you know take it take it as it is and then don't be dis discouraged if 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 you if the answer from the editor is is a refusal deal with referees comments in a completely detached manner they are generally meant to be used helpful never mind that there can be rude referees also as i sort of showed you before but most of the circumstances the referees comments are very very uh, helpful in in updating your paper and taking it to the next level of revising. Yeah. In my view, a request for revision is actually good news. It really is, because that means your paper is getting somewhere. Yeah. And also that means you are in the publishing cycle. Nearly every published paper is revised at least once. Please remember that. You know, there are hardly any situations where papers are published as it is. I'm not referring to conferences, but in, in good journals. So you being in the publishing cycle is, 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 is a very, very good thing to celebrate. So there's absolutely no need to, uh, uh, no need to panic. Even if some comments are sharp or discouraging, don't forget they aren't personal. A lot of reviewers, of course, you know, we do the double blind review process, but having said that still, maybe there can be instances where uh, where uh, authors can be identified uh, based on the past references and so on and so forth. But you shouldn't, shouldn't forget most of the reviewers, the, the, the comments aren't personal. So just don't try to personalize the, uh, uh, the, the comments that, that you are receiving. So how to revise your paper? Always acknowledge the editor and, and, and set a revision deadline. Otherwise, your information will get outdated and it, it won't be published. So, for example, if the, the, generally the, uh, the journals give you a deadline to submit your revision. Try and adhere to that deadline. And also consult with colleagues and co-authors uh, uh, in order to sort of get, get the corrections uh, uh, sorted. And also, always try and attach a covering letter identifying, identifying how you have addressed the reviewer's comments. One thing you need to remember is it doesn't mean that every comment that you need to ad uh, address. Maybe some comments just do not apply to your case. But so in that sense, just make, you know, just, just write that in, in that tape, in the covering letter that you are doing. You know, against that particular uh, uh, comment, you can sort of say, you know, on, well, I have reflected on this, but uh, I don't think that it doesn't, it, it applies to, to my paper. You know, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't mean that you need to, you need to cover every comment that has been raised by reviewers. You, you can be just rejecting them as well. Yeah. So then if, if you're not clear about any, any, any review, any uh, points that have been raised, please write, uh, write back to the reviewers, uh, the journal asking uh, for further clarifications. Yeah. And most importantly, uh, you need to meet the uh, 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 revision deadline. Then that is actually if, that is actually if your paper is, is accepted with revisions. But then the situation, if your paper is rejected, oh no, but then don't be disheartened. disheartened. Ask why and, and listen carefully. Try again and do not ever give up. Yeah. So you really need to be mindful that at least 50% of the papers submitted don't get published. Yeah. And, and 
everybody has been rejected at least once. Oh my God, in my case, I can't even count, particularly during the early stages of my career. You, even now I get rejection. So that not in research papers, but in, in generally in, in, in research grants and so on and so forth. But don't give up, you know, this is actually part of the uh, part of the system. So just keep trying. And then as the next step, what some of you might want to do is actually to work with published uh, publishers to sort of do kind of series of papers. So this is actually maybe the next step, but I, I, I you know, but I want to highlight, you know, for example, uh, where, what, what, what else you can do in terms of actually taking the next step about, about working with publishers to uh, promote content uh, on, on, on a regular basis. So this is actually the next step, but perhaps might not be that applicable to, uh, to, uh, to some of you, but just remember that this option is also um, uh, available. Yeah. So in my view, I suppose publishing is in, uh, in academia is a particularly important career step, but like all things that are worthwhile, it takes time. Uh, please remember that. And also, uh, also it, it, it gets easier with practice, believe me. So don't wait any longer. You know, you really need to be starting, uh, start writing your paper now. So that is all that I have to sort of say to you. So we have, uh, we have, I, I think, about uh, 15, 20 minutes for any any questions. So I uh, I do not know how the organizers want to uh, 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 take the questions. So any um, any um, um, any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you so much, Professor uh, Dilan. I think I can. Uh, you can hear me. Yes, and I. If can. you have any questions, yeah. If you have any questions, you can raise hands. So you can unmute and you can ask a question. Or otherwise that you can put into the chat box. Yeah, yeah. So either way is fine. Either way is yeah. fine. Ask anything, you know, it can be even really important question. It can even well be a silly one. That's absolutely fine. You know, we I just want to have a have a conversation with you, you know, just to see whether whether it was useful or whether you know whether will you be start writing your next paper tomorrow, perhaps, you know, then that will be really good. Any any questions? Dilan, Professor Dilan, regarding this uh, similarity index, do you have any? Do you know any uh, kind of a free software to uh, use? Because some universities in Sri Lanka, we don't have uh, just kind of thing like eternity. Moratoria we have, but in other universities, some universities. So in that case, do you have any suggestions no. to? I know I don't think that it I don't think that it is really available bundling that is why I sort of said uh, this is quite uh, quite a sad situation in some instances but you shouldn't actually rely on on uh, this evaluation versions and things like that I don't think so okay right so that means we have to encourage our universities to purchase it and, definitely uh, definitely I suppose you yeah, know that that has to be the number one investment in my view Mm -hmm. But it is not expensive because I think for the, the universities from developing countries, they have different packages. So I think um, uh, that will be useful. Yeah. Okay. So there is one person raised hand. So you can uh, through your question. Um, Thank you, madam. Madam, uh, still I'm having confusion with this. Uh... Uh, how to write the introduction and the literature, literature. What is the difference? In both sections of these papers and thesis, we are providing these previous uh, findings. So I couldn't differentiate these two. Could you please uh, explain, madam? Okay, so the uh, introduction is, uh, again, as I sort of said to you before, th there's no need to sort of include uh, references. Introduction is actually introducing the topic and then giving a kind of a flavor of why you are doing the research, your aims and objectives. You don't need to actually cite the references there. It is just kind of giving the kind of overall view of what the reader can expect in the next sections. So really speaking, I think this is actually a good question where a lot of lot of researchers actually uh, get this uh, section actually mixed, these two sections mixed up. You don't need to do the literature analysis in, in, in the introduction section. It, it is the next section where you need to do the literature review, okay? Okay, thank you, madam. So it means that the introduction is full of our idea. 
If Our ideas and also making reference to what has already been done, kind of a, a, a state of the art, as I sort of said to you, we, we all need to be outside the well rather than sitting in the, at the bottom of the bottom of the well. So in that sense, you need to actually make reference to what has actually happened elsewhere in terms of the subject matter. And then to to have more discussions on that topic in the in the in the previous sec in the uh, subseding sections but introduction is just setting the scene what the paper is all about what is the start and then what the aims and the objectives are and then what the uh, what the reader can expect by reading the paper okay okay thank you Mada. okay any more questions yes janaka please go ahead yeah good uh, good evening uh, professor dilanki i just want to know that when is the technical uh, technical report it's it's coming uh, like an introduction body and conclusion then i want to know so how is the marks given like uh, i i mean i i just know uh, the technical thing so what is the included technical thing more than 50 percent counting or the counting more percentage for the uh, the literature style or grammar the, I mean, uh, technical thing or the other side, the, what is the uh, marks counting uh, something like that? No, it, it is overall. In uh, it, it doesn't work like actually uh, rating a research proposal, uh, Janaka. I think it is actually, you know, it's overall. The, the, the papers are not reviewed based on percentage marks. You, you, you have to satisfy everything at 100%. So really speaking, every section is important. Yeah, mm, is that you. okay? Uh, thank you, thank you. Yes, Chamila, you can please. Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Madam, uh, for your elaborations on uh, uh, this journal writing. And then uh, uh, I have one question regarding that actually, actually clarification regarding this plague I mean, uh, actually, I was delighted that you said that uh, uh, should be uh, getting to the 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 uh, deep and then uh, find out what are the uh, causes and means why uh, this has been uh, this has come to that kind of a percentage assigning for these so all these categories but mm -hmm. then also i thought that uh, it could be a discretion uh, uh, of uh, whoever the supervisor or whoever who is reviewing this journal and mm -hmm. then he can manage with his own discretion so that the uh, person who is uh, who has written the journal paper maybe depending on uh, uh, the supervisor's discretion rather than uh, some reference i mean reference uh, they say 25 percent 30 percent of uh, like that is all these categories so uh, how can you uh, differentiate on that uh, but i rather like your comment on uh, on that but but still i i have my points yes thank you I, I I couldn't understand the question. Can you can you make it uh, because you, you sort of said that uh, what what is the role of the supervisor here? What what did you? No, actually, actually the plagiarism means that it, let's say uh, if the journal paper is uh, accepted or not, that depends mm -hmm. on the plagiarism. So mm -hmm. then uh, you said no, no, that no, it, it, it is not uh, that is one of the factors. It is actually not the main factor, but of course all the papers are checked for plagiarism. So. So, uh, so that is really important, but that is actually not the main factor, but that is one of the factors. Of course, you know, there are so many other factors, as I discussed today, uh, that will be counted, the right methodology, literature review, uh, you know, everything will be considered, but play, checking for plagiarism is one thing. So the thing is, no matter how good the paper is, if the, is, if, if the right references aren't used, then the paper won't be accepted. So that is actually the, the, the bottom line. So if you can be very clear about your question, Please, can you repeat it? No, actually, actually it, it, it has to do with the, the, the whoever reviewing this journal paper. I mean, uh, whoever accepting this or not. Yes, that, uh, yes. If we're yeah. going to accept that on plagiarism, uh, mm. let's say, uh, we, on your view, uh, respect, respectfully, uh, that you said that uh, it should be based on uh, the deep thinking, maybe uh, these percentages won't be actually counted. Yes. When it is accepted, yes. so but then uh, it should be a, it could be a discussion of uh, the, the 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 party who is uh, uh, making these reviews, so Indeed. that uh, maybe Indeed. it is rejected or not. Yeah. Indeed, because that is that is what the review process is all about. Because you know we we rely on people's expertise, so you know that is that is what it is. So it's actually 
purely based on individual judgments yes that's that's absolutely correct but but again i'm i'm you know i just i just said that on the side you know it, it doesn't mean that the similarity in this index with 50 uh, percent uh, article will be rejected or it will be accepted it all depends on how how we want to actually sort of see and how what the what the uh, author has done in terms of uh, uh, making references or maybe there can be situations where chunks of literary uh, uh, text you know sometimes maybe uh, a half a page of text is just uh, copied from another another journal another publishing uh, 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 outlet so in a situation like that of course you know it's, it's a it's a description of of the reviewer that is how these things uh, work you know that is actually the, the the role of the reviewer in 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 every aspect okay thank you thank you madam okay Good evening, Madam. I am Engineer Monica Vahatamsi. Uh, could you give some comments on uh, that, uh, how we extract the summary paper, final summary paper from the full thesis as to publish? So, sorry, sorry, I, I couldn't hear you, uh, uh, Monica. What, 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 what is it? Could you give some uh, comments or instructions uh, to how we extract summary paper from full thesis madam ah yeah. okay okay in a but thesis then now i try to publish my paper yeah. and I, I request your uh, comments on that ah okay so but again you know you need to actually get the get the structure and then you need to actually invest some time about what are the key research questions that you are going to address so uh, and then start you know putting them in the introduction section and then that can be done you know that can be done but uh, again you really need to be very mindful about you are extracting the right information so that you can summarize what you have done in a in a in a in, in, in a in a thesis or dissertation in a in a in a journal paper so that that can be done but you you need to invest a bit of time because you you one thing you can't do is just copy and paste section from your dissertation to a journal paper it doesn't work because journal, maybe the dissertation is 20,000 words, but the journal has to be 8,000. So you really need to be actually doing a lot of editing and and and, and it, it needs to be readable. So in that sense, I think you need to be very mindful about, about how, to, uh, how to do that. But uh, again, the synthesis you can actually use as the starting point. You need to synthesize your own, own dissertation in, 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 in um, uh, how should I say, in, in combining various sections together. So th that is actually, again, another sort of writing style that you, you should use. But having said that, maybe one uh, the good starting point is rather than trying to cover the entire thesis uh, 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 within one paper, maybe just one area or if it is very strong. But having said that, I'm not actually saying to you that you should be writing so many papers with one piece of study. But again, those are the skills that you, the analytical skill is really, really important. If you can recall, I mentioned about the synthesis skills. So you really need to be um, debating within your mind how, how you need to actually bring all these uh, things together. Okay. Yes, thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Jepala, you can, uh, you can ask your question now. Actually, uh, thank you very much for this uh, very good session, madam. This is Udesh. Uh, my question is, in uh, some journals, author guidelines says, uh, if we are getting some figures from the other research papers, we have to get the permission from those authors. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, my doubt is, madam, if we are citing those figures uh, by the original authors, is it essential to have their permission? Yes. Because the, uh, uh, the, the copyright works differently for, uh, for figures and tables sometimes. So if the if the journal wants that, that has to be done. Some journals don't want that, but the, these are to do with data protection and data sharing uh, rules actually. Yeah. So if, if the journal wants that, you have to. You can't just make reference to a uh, reference to a table or or figure. Instead, you need to get the permission to because that table or figure has already been published. So you are using that image. So again, these are kind of publishing rules actually. So if the journal wants you to do that, you have to do that. So uh, only option that you have is not to use it, uh, to, to use some, uh, 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 not to use that particular diagram on the table or to or to redo it and 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 uh, uh, and to use it some other way. So, but 
bottom line is if you have to provide that, you have to provide it. Okay, thank you very much, Anna. Okay. Thank you, Professor Nilanti. There's a question at the chat box. Uh, can you read it? Or, uh... Yeah, okay, selecting the most suitable journal. But again, you know, there's actually no, no hard and fast rule about it because it all depends on your subject area. And then, um, you know, it's always good to go for good journals. And then, because nowadays, you know, you can go to Scopus, Science Direct, and you can actually sort of see the standing of, of journals. And then, uh, but then on, on the other hand, I think, you know, there, there's a major issue saying that, uh, what matters is actually not the standing of the journal, but what the uh, what uh, what the research is all about. But maybe you know that is I say yes and no to that because where you publish actually is is matters also because I, I think again linking with that I have seen this uh, another trend in Sri Lanka. Every university now has a journal. I, I don't know why, uh, you know, I don't know whether some of you maybe might be able to just uh, educate me. Maybe I have, I, I'm not aware of it, but why do you have to do that? Because, you know, they are not actually internationally indexed or they are not Scopus indexed. And then, um, um, you know, if if I'm a researcher uh, attached to, let's say, University of Moratua, if there's a journal published by University of Moratua, I won't be publishing there because I'll be just wasting my time. Uh, because it, it might just be useful to just to sort of satisfy your employers, but it doesn't go anywhere else. So in that sense, I suppose, you know, international journals and uh, particularly index journals are the, are the ones to look out for. So identify index journals in your area and then depending on the writing style and then the past papers, uh, past articles and so on and so forth, you should be able to come up with a, a, a short list. Okay. Uh, any other questions? And uh, there's another one from uh, chat box. Um, She's asking that, uh, is it okay to present different objectives of the same research in different conferences? And how to check if a conference is Scopus indexed? If it is, uh, if it is uh, Scopus indexed, they have to actually declare that in the conference website. Some people say that for the sake of it, but don't get uh, trapped to those. So in my view, conferences are good to make, make contacts and to create network. They are very, very good. You know, I'm not discouraging. You really need to do conferences, but don't count conference papers as good outputs because a lot of conference papers aren't indexed. So in that sense, I think making presentations at conferences based on ab different abstracts is absolutely fine because uh, I go to conferences to create networks and to meet people, not to get my publications. And that is what exactly I'm telling my researchers also, because now next week we have a major conference and seven of them are going, but they are presenting their, their abstracts. Uh, and, and the main purpose of that is actually meeting the like-minded people and meeting, uh, uh, meeting uh, similar researchers. But if you want a good publication, which is actually, which is read by wide audience, indexed, and which is good for your CV, as I sort of said before, do a journal paper. Okay. Anything okay. Else? Uh, thank you, raising hand once again. Yes, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah, Professor, that uh, my question is uh, again, uh, uh, I, I have asked again uh, earlier question that uh, it comes to that question. Actually, if, if one technical report, we, if we receive something like a if he, that guy is not following the procedure as what you say, but he has explained what he's done experiment and uh, he's reporting all the input calculation, everything there, but notice the procedure with the uh, grammar and everything is wrong. So what, the, what I, I just want to, what would the technical panel will, will is, once is, is they are going to reject for, so what will the decision, final decision? Did because again, 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 you know, a journal paper is kind of overall thing, because as I sort of said, there aren't any percentages given for different sections. There can be a situation where, okay, really good analysis, technical information is very good, but the language used is rubbish. So that means then there will be, a, it will be a revision. Okay. So then there can be a situation where language is very good, but then the scientific content and the analysis is rubbish. So then that can be that can even well be a rejection. So it 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 varies on on how how the whole 
whole uh, 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 it is actually not the sum of all components but taking individual components together if if you know what i mean okay thank you in the chat box uh, somebody is asking if an abstract is presented in a conference is it okay and to publish its full paper in a paper review or of journey. course of course yeah yeah, yeah. And anybody, if you have questions, please uh, raise your hands. Uh, and uh, another one, yeah, Shukul is asking, can I copy my published journal content to my thesis without major changes? Can I copy yeah. my published journal content? No chance, absolutely no chance. <laughs> you know, you, you really need to be very mindful about that because uh, that is why you need to be very careful about uh, about uh, uh, how should I say making reference to your public uh, publications in your thesis and you can't just copy because then it becomes self self plagiarism so you need to be okay. mindful about that and then you need to actually make reference to uh, uh, your own paper so you need to be very careful in that case actually if the person is a say, PhD candidate and he is publishing on his way that he's publishing a paper. So in that case, I think civil occasions he's asking. So in that case, his paper, most of the part of his paper or come coming as a chapter or the part of a chapter. So in that case, actually, how you are looking at it? Then the, then the paraphrasing needs to be done. You can't, one thing you can't do is, okay, so I, I know what you're saying. Okay. As a PhD student, yeah. a second year PhD student has done a journal paper, but will be, uh, will be uh, using the same journal papers text in, in, in the thesis. You can't do that because then it becomes, because if, if the journal paper is a kind of a index one, uh, it, it is actually against their, uh, their um, copyright law. So you will be actually, co you, you will be actually uh, uh, caught for plagiarism. So in that sense, I think, I don't see how a full journal paper will fit into a thesis, but maybe certain aspects. But you can actually paraphrase and and do the uh, do the changes, you know, for for even a literature review because in a in a in a in a journal paper, literature review is quite concise. But in a thesis, literature review is generally about seventy to uh, sixty to seventy pages. So you you expand, so you can actually get a quotation from the journal, but add add lot more literature. So there are there are ways and means of doing it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's a good clarification. And there's another one who's raising hand. Please, uh, please yes. go. Uh, uh, right. yes. Thank you so much. Can you please explain, like, if you're going for a conference, like, if you're picking an abstract and if you just get accepted, and then they ask for the full paper submission. So, can we stop at that? Then, like, you know, uh, to uh, attend the conference? Thank you. It all depends on the conference organizers because, for example, the conferences we do, we allow people to do the presentations based on on uh, on on the abstract. Some some conferences don't, so it all depends on the conference organizers. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, and also, madam, like uh, actually, my one of my papers was rejected uh, from journal uh, Hydrology, and then I was like thinking, uh, like to choose the second one. So, do, like, do you have any um, suggestions, like when we are uh, selecting the second? Uh, the journal so yeah. like the criteria that we should look at uh, if if the paper is rejected once the same criteria as above okay. uh, yeah because uh, because then you are addressing the comments and and sending it to another journal so it, it has to be at the same level because otherwise there's no point in doing it yeah. okay i think we will have to uh, uh there's one now. more question uh, i think that can the paper publish in the regional conference be published in the international journal uh, no not the same paper no then you are you are doing the self plagiarizing um then with that one seems that there are no more questions and professor dilanti once again thank you so much for your kind contribution to uh, that uh, uh, scientific uh, crowd that who gathered here today and I think that you got a very concise, uh, uh, concise. Uh, what is it that the 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 message of how to write a paper, how to gather things, how you have to organize all these things. So thank you so much once again for coming us with your uh, 
important weekend you spent on us and once again thank you so much and participant yeah, thank, thank you so much yeah and uh, miss panti and mr chamila that you are here uh, with us and for uh, to, and supporting for organizing this uh, this uh, yeah yeah i i, I hope i hope it is uh, th thank you very much panduni i think you 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 guys are doing a, a great job by organizing these events because i hope that it is useful and that my saturday morning is not uh, <laughs> uh, not a waste you know that is what is important you know a lot of uh, upcoming researchers are there so i think um, just keep on writing and as you said you can't do anything with a blank sheet of paper you know you really need to start writing you know get a sheet of paper and and put the ideas together and and that is actually uh, 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 well, uh, that will be a good starting uh, point. So I suppose if you need any any information about about anything, you know, you can actually contact me. If, you know, depending on my time availability, I will try to respond to you. So all the very best. So keep on writing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. And thank you. Bye.